Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Jim Worm with TechSapa. Welcome to TechSapa Live. I uh, got Robert Trevino here today. Um, now with Terracon. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Now you're on the you're on the private sector. Yes, sir. Well, congratulations on that. We'll Thank wish you. you the best. Appreciate what are you it. going to be doing with Terracon? With Terracon, I'm going to focus. You know, at, at first we're going to be helping TechSapa districts. Okay. Um, we're going to be doing some materials support. Okay. We're going to do materials testing, quality assurance for them. Uh, we're also going to help a little bit with the uh, forensics, payment structural design, and then later on we're going to focus on CE&I, construction So doing some of the same kind of stuff you were doing before. Very similar. Very yes. similar, but now just in, in a little bit different aspect. In a different, yes. Awesome. Different well, aspect. congratulations. Thank you. I wish you the best on that. Appreciate it. Well, today we've got Robert here today, and we're going to be talking in a little bit more detail about payment design, and particularly FPS 21, how it works, uh, and, and kind of go through that. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, Robert, you've got a controller there, and you can kind of see there. And we're gonna we're gonna jump back and forth the full screen because Robert's got a lot of detail in here that we want to go through. So, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna kind of do a little. Uh, I'm gonna bug you along the way. Sure, please, <laughs> in please your feel presentation. free. And uh, so, let's uh, let's talk about FPS 21. Let's get started. So you know the first the first thing I like to to discuss before we move on to FPS, um, you know first uh, the the resources, right? Right. And we can probably move on to the, okay. to the second slide. There we go. Let me bring that up there. Sure. Well, we're going to talk today about the fundamentals of flexible payment design using FPS twenty one. Got it. Um, uh, before we get into uh, some of the details, I think there's two components, two main resources that every payment engineer doing designs for TechSat. Uh, needs to look at. And they're good resources. Very good resources. So the first one is going to be your payment manual right. um, that has all the policy procedures for design rehabilitation of flexible payment design. Lots of stuff in there. Lots of stuff in there. Yeah. But the other thing is you need to look at the district payment design standard operating procedure. Okay. You know, so you every district's got its own little, the way they analyze it, because it's a big state, obviously, right? Yes. And you know, we're going to do things a little bit different in El Paso than in Atlanta. Yes. And so we and we've got different materials and different assumptions we're going to make in that process and we've got to be able to adjust for that and that's what the districts have done. Yes. And I've even seen like Austin district has some typical sections that they use as kind of an SOP. They they've kind of narrowed down some of the materials that they want to use so you don't I guess one of the cool things about asphalt is there's lots of variability. There's lots of opportunities and lots of materials. That's also a downside because now you get in some cases you got too many choices. Yeah, yeah. A few years ago, um, <laughs> you know, uh, doing a presentation for Short Course, uh, I asked all the district payment engineers, if you consider this fixed easel projection and your uh, predominant type of soil in your area, right. what would be your payment design? Okay. And it was all over the place. But that's expected, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, Texas is so big. Some have good soils uh, where don't, they don't need any stabilization. Some, some, some need a stabilized soils climb. Need stabilization. Yeah, some have sulfates, yeah. Yeah. And, and the bases are a little different in thickness, and the hot mix thickness is, is a little all over the place. Gotcha. But that's well, that expected. Makes sense. And that's that the reason sense. we need a, a district payment design so standard you got, operating you got procedure. Your, 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 your general policy, yes. the flexible payment design, and then your SOP for the district. Yes. And then within that constraint, it starts to narrow things down or make some additional assumptions and based on local conditions. Local condition, Perfect. resources, and weather. and Good. Yeah. So look up two of them. Look up two of them. Make sure you get the one from the district as well. All right. Let's, get, let's get sure. continue on. Let's move on. Um, get going. There we go. All, All right. right. Let's uh, zoom in here. There we go. Right, you know, there's a couple of things uh, we need to consider. Uh, I think every payment engineer would agree that there's two components uh, we need to consider. The first one is your traffic projection. Very right. important, critical. Absolutely. Uh, the second one is your payment foundation. You need to know what your payment is going to be sitting on top of, so you need a good structural evaluation of that payment. Gotcha. Once you have a good handle on both, then you can then use you those can numbers to, and use FPS to produce right. what you need to but, design. But, but don't, I guess my... my my standpoint on that, don't shortcut those two Yes. because you can use FES all day, but if your inputs are bad, your output's going to be bad. Exactly. And so that's, I, I appreciate you saying that because we've got to make sure we, 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 know what we, gotta, we know what we got to work with and that's what's underneath and we know what's coming. And mm -hmm. man, it just seems like we're getting more and more traffic every day. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, Sometimes let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Very good. 
I guess I need a new battery for that thing. There we go. All right. I know this is a little small, but so the first step, of course, for, for TechStat is to request the traffic projection. Okay. And there's a division that takes care of that. It's TPMP, Transportation Planning and Programming. Okay. So when you submit a request, you're going to report that you're going to get a report that looks Keep similar going. to this. I'm going to zoom in there. Keep going. Sure. So in this case, you know, for flexible payments, our policy requires that we design for a 20-year projection. Okay. So uh, you have uh, two components on top. You've got a 20-year projection, the bottom 30-year projection. In this case, we're going to focus on the top. Mm -hmm. So the first two uh, items on your left are going to be your average daily traffic. So you need your current ADT, and then you need to know what that ADT is going to be in 20 years. Okay. Um, another critical component is what are my truck percentage. Right. Um, and then two drivers in FPS, two drivers of that thickness are going to be mainly your easels. But when you have uh, low easels, say, for example, less than one, than, than, than one million, uh, your average of the 10 heaviest wheel loads daily. Okay. So that is going to tell you uh, how much payment do you need to protect that payment from those occasional heavy loads. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. Good deal. Let me uh, back out of that, and then you can... Go forward. Okay. Good so, deal. So you know, you know, before we move on to the next slide, I think we need to talk a little bit about you know, TPMP has a big task of projecting. Projecting. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. I, you know, I, that, that that amazes me how they. I mean, I can't figure out what I'm going to do next week. That's right. And they're figuring out 20 years, or they're estimating best on best guess or best you know good engineering practices. I'm sure they look back and see what they've done in the past to try to figure out what's worked and, and all that sort of stuff. But man, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't know, have, have any idea what Texas is gonna look like in 10 years. Sure, so, you know, again, they a have a big people. task, but a lot more people, yeah. a lot more yeah. traffic. So yeah. sometimes you gotta take a look at that projection. Sometimes, you know, it's very spot on, but then, you know, a year later, there, there comes a wind farm development, uh, sure. energy sector, right? There, there's changes, so we need to go back and take a look or my truck percentage is Tesla it, is it comes correct? To Austin. You yes. Know, all, all, you know stuff like that. It's just or, or Samsung up in the north part of it, up in North Austin. I mean, those are huge developments and have big ramifications on, you know, population, uh, truck you know, loading, everything. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's the the ripple effect on it is crazy, mm -hmm. absolutely crazy. So good. Yeah. yeah which so we takes me like, to the, to we the gotta, next. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta know what we got as far as traffic goes. Got to get new batteries. Not coming? Mm -hmm. right. Let me do that. Okay, there we go. Very good. So that's going to take me to my next slide. So districts have some resources. Okay. Um, they, they have some, some tables, some spreadsheets they can use mm -hmm. uh, to enter those numbers. Uh, so they take the traffic projection from TPMP, they plug in the numbers into this spreadsheet, mm -hmm. and they can estimate what type of easel per truck was used to project. And then, uh, based on that, um, they can review that traffic and have the discussion, is my truck percentage correct? Gotcha. Is my easel per truck correct, or what we call a truck factor? Mm -hmm. So if that projection uh, was before an energy sector development, now they need to make some adjustments. In this case, for this example, now we know that my traffic went from 15 to 35 percent trucks. Mm -hmm. My easels per truck now are, you know, assuming an energy sector truck traffic, you're, you're up to 1.25 in this case. So you can see how that easels are, are increasing, right? Yeah, just we've, from we've tripled, roughly tripled the easels there. Roughly tripled. Just by making, by, by doing some additional checks and for now, you know, understanding that something as big as come to Texas, yeah, you know, in that area. So I think these these are the things I think that that's it's really important for designers and for everybody involved to to not you know look at the numbers, look at your data, but then also think what's going on. Think about what's what's going to happen, you know, in the in the next you know five ten years and and. We want people to make really smart designs, mm -hmm. really educated designs, to critically think through this design process to make sure that when we get a good design out there, it's going to work. Yes, yes. We, we think cost effective, but then if you don't pay attention to your, to your easels or your loading, right. you don't make those adjustments, you build that job within a couple of years, you see premature failures. Yeah, right? and, it, and the job may have taken all the traffic that it was designed for. Yes. True. You know, I've got 20 years of traffic in, in eight or 10 years, and it's like, well, the job's got issues. Like, well, yeah, because 
we just missed a try. And I'm not, I'm, the TPP folks, if you're watching, God bless you. <laughs> I love you. But it's, it's, a, it's a hard one. It's, yeah. Nobody knows. Nobody mm -hmm. knows. So we've, we've got to be thinking. I'm, I'm always like, hey, let's, let's do a little belt and suspenders approach when we're starting to think about, you know, our subgrades and our, and our, and our traffic because those are big drivers here. Make sure we're, we're getting it as close as we can to being right. All right. All right. Where are we at? I changed their batteries while we were doing that, so hopefully this is going to be a little Let's bit faster again. now. Right, the, you know, the second aspect of um, the, the, these, these adjustments, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, uh, you know, your projection, you request a little early, okay. and then maybe the job is delayed, or, or you know, whatever the case might be, um, you, you have another tool that you can use to, to, to bump up that traffic. So if you okay. request that, that data in 2020, okay. but you need to use it in 2022, then you can use a spreadsheet just like this one to, to bump that oh, ESO okay. loading to So you can to make the, an additional adjustment. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Good deal. Good deal. And you can also, uh, and I guess that's in, in your tools and stuff, you can also request current traffic counts. Um, they can put up the way in, the way in mo the portable way in motion scales and kind of re-verify traffic. Yes. So okay. the districts have resources. They have in-house resources. They have consultants too, mm -hmm. um, and, like and they have universities. Terracon can help. <laughs> um, and they they set uh, pneumatic tubes, and and what they get is a classification study. Mm -hmm. So so you get you know class one through thirteen, and right. anything four and higher they consider trucks. You get a good ADT. You get a truck percentage, and you use those to get. So, you know, those, those, are, those are the numbers. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right. So where are we at? There we let's go. See. Oh, this is a good one. Let's, 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 let's spend some time here. Right. And now we're switching gears to structural evaluation of payment. Now we go, had a Your discussion of traffic. We'll figure out what's out there. Yes. Okay. We need to know Perfect. what we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, we need to know what we're sitting on top of. What, what is my hot mix thickness? What is my base thickness? So we need to go out there. We can use non-destructive tools, but we also need to go out there, drill some cores, and verify what's mm -hmm. out there, right? Gotcha. In this case, you know, this is a real, real project. The chart that you see on your on your right, it's a coring log, and you know, the the top is your hot mix thickness, wow. the bottom is your base thickness. As you can see, sometimes you you run into the situation, and once you get into construction, you don't do your homework. You don't want to run to these surprises, right? It's all over the place. Yeah, I mean, if you took one core instead of all those. You know, you could be, you know, in the first one or the seventh, sixth one. So like you'd have a completely different idea what's what's out there in the roadway. So having a good plan to kind of under to estimate really what you've got out there, and and it's taken enough cores to get a representation of really what's out there. That makes a lot of sense. Sure. Yeah. So you need to know how much hot mix, how much flex base, if you have mm -hmm. any. And then, of course, you need to run some, you know, PIs, a plasticity right. index to know, Absolutely. is my subgrade expansive? Do I need to deal with it, you know, with treatment? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that gives you a good idea of what you need to do. Gotcha. The second component, uh, again, using the non-destructive testing tools, in this case, the fallen weight, uh, the flectometer is pretty popular with, with TechSat. Um, we use it a lot, and, and you know what it does, um, you have a 9,000 pound load, it's simulating a 9,000 pound uh, wheel load, mm -hmm. and then those sensors are gonna measure those responses. It's gonna drop that load. Drop that load, and then that those sensors are gonna measure the deflection of the payment, mm -hmm. which is gonna tell those you. Those sensors are spaced far out. Yeah, they had right. seven sensors, yeah. and then uh, the. So it's looking at that, that deflection, deflection bowl. base and bowl, yeah. ba base and bowl, okay. Yeah, so you get payment stiffness overall. It tells you how stiff my payment is uh, with that first sensor, and mm -hmm. then you have a program that you can use modulus seven to do a back calculation procedure. Okay. And then it tells you what is my modulus for each of my layers. Okay, cool. So I can really get a, a and and it's and a, since it's non-destructive, I can do a bunch of it. Yeah. Right. I can I can really get a good understanding of of really what's in the what's in that whole payment structure. And so when I go back to do my design, I can go okay. Man, I really know what's out here now. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to short. We don't want to shorten. Um, uh, we don't. You know, penny wise, pound foolish. You know, you've heard that kind of thing. Is like, man, don't short on. Don't don't cut yourself short on doing the forensics. Mm -hmm. No, figure out what's out there. Figure out what's out there. Good. All right. Awesome.
Yeah, you know, and, and we can talk about this later, but FPS has a tool where you can enter the payment thickness mm -hmm. and, and, and my layer composition with the modulus, my design assumptions, and it can simulate what that deflection should be, right? So, so you design you a payment, and, you okay. can go back, run FWD, and see, okay, I, my okay. design, my assumptions were correct. Gotcha, gotcha. Good, awesome. Okay. So next, you know, we need to we need to talk a little bit about the design modulus values. Mm -hmm. uh, these right here, this table, I pulled from the payment manual. Right. Um, and again, districts once they get experience with their soils, with their materials, they can do their own values and put them in their SOP. Okay. So in their particular, in a particular district, this may actually be kind of already kind of pre-refined. Yes. Down, but but those are good numbers. And let's kind of talk through some of this. Let's start at the bottom and kind of work our way up. Sure. Here in this Starting process. Starting from the bottom up, of course, you have your subgrade. Uh, the design modulus, the typical range is from 8 to 20. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't mean that some, some subgrades can be 6, 5 KSI. Right. So you can b have a very, very weak foundation. Right. And the best way to get it and the, 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 the preferred way to get it is through FWD back calculation. Okay. 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 And then, you know, we're going to. From, from the subgrade, let's jump uh, to the flexible base. Okay. Uh, the typical range is from 40 to 70 KSI. Gotcha. But if you look at the comments, that modulus shouldn't be higher than maybe three to four times your subgrade modulus. So if okay. you have a weak foundation, uh, your base might not be as strong, right? Well, that so makes that, sense. Yeah, that, that flex sense. base is, is highly I'm, dependent. I'm pressing down, even if it's super stiff, it's still got to transfer. Yes. And if that's super, if that, you say I got a super strong flex base, I put it on something weak, it's not going to work as a system. Yes, highly dependent. That flex based stiffness is highly dependent on what is sitting on top of That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. And then you have. I don't, I tell you what, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to leave this without talking about um, this, this layer in between. And what happened to it? There it is. Um, treated subgrades mm -hmm. or treated sub bases, that kind of stuff. Um, Charles Gaganis with TTI did some work for. Um, uh, text text app uh, a year or two ago looked at a bunch of our award-winning pavements and in that process he analyzed pavement structure analyzed construction data analyzed performance and one of the things that was routinely picked out of that thing was those pavements that had really good performance had some sort of stabilized sub base or subgrade in there to I guess help build a better platform mm -hmm. and so it's like hey that's worth talking about obviously there's an expense to that but you know from my perspective I mean we can you know there's another term in pavement design that's been around for a long time now called perpetual pavements or long life pavements that idea where we only ever want to build the subgrade or the the foundation on the roadway one time and then we we force any our distress up into the asphalt layer so that we can remove that overnight and put a new layer in, but I don't ever. I don't want to be pennywise pound foolish and say, "Hey, I got a you know got a really good deal on a payment," <laughs> but when it fails, it's going to fail from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. And if it fails from the bottom up, I lost my whole payment structure. Yes, and that's a problem. Yes, that's a problem. Big so problem. these are these are things that we want to look at in this process of of, of kind of marching through this. So. Okay, now I've done my little deal there. Let's talk about <coughs> modulus because that's what FPS is driven on. It's driven. It's very highly modulus driven. Yes, yes. So, so now you know. Again, we talked about the flexible base, and and, and if we have a weak subgrade, that's when we need to consider, like you said, do we need to treat the subgrade? Do we mm -hmm. need to stabilize that subgrade? Mm -hmm. You improve that design modulus, but you also create that impermeable layer, right? You, you mm -hmm. keep the water out. Right. So that's that's that's, that's a biggie. Big, big. That's huge. Yeah, that's, that's a big huge. deal. Yeah. So then, you know, you, you have options, of course, depending on, on your sole PI, you can do lime, you can do cement, you can, you can treat separate different ways, mm -hmm. and, then, and then you get into your, your base layers, you can also use a cement treated base or a foamed asphalt, the motion. Mm -hmm. There's different, different rep recipes right. in, in your, in your, um, that you can use to, to design. Correct. Well, now that we've talked a little bit about the base, uh, let's move on to, to our surface or, or hot mix layers. Okay. And, and let's start at the top. Okay. We have a dense graded hot mix, and, and as you can see, the design modulus depends on how thick it is. Uh, you, if, if you do four inches of less, uh, the recommendation is to use 500 KSI. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a range between four to eight, you can use 650, uh, and, and eight inches or thicker, 
uh, you can use 850 KSI. So that's special specification 3076 or the old 341 and in a 24 book it'll be 341 again so that's what that that mix design is good workhorse mix um, but let's look at the next one because I think there's something there for us in, when we get the super pave. Sure once we move on to to our our super pave mix or uh, stone matrix mm -hmm. um, once you look at the the, the first line uh, four inches or less you can you can bump that up to 650 Okay. And as we go thicker, four to six, seven fifty, and, and six or more, you can you can use eight hundred and fifty KSI. Okay, so that's our that's our uh, special specification thirty seventy seven for uh, super pave thirty eighty for SMA, and when we revert back, it'll be thirty uh, three forty four and three forty six uh, in the twenty four book. So those are coming around. So there is an advantage and. Um, this says inch per inch super pave stronger. That's mm -hmm. what that's what how I read that. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you know, ten percent, fifteen percent, somewhere in that range, um, that we're getting something, we're getting an advantage from a design standpoint with a better material. So I think you know, f so for the extra maybe the extra cost, there's a benefit. It's not it's not oh, okay now I've got a more expensive material to use, but I'm not getting any benefit for it. You're actually getting. Yes. You're getting a benefit in, in pavement design. Good. Yes, All and right. going back to, you know, non-destructive tools and, you know, districts need to go out there. It's recommended once mm -hmm. they build a pavement, what am I really getting? Right. right. So, so some may feel a little reluctant to, to increase that modulus, but if you're getting it, uh, take advantage. Exactly. Right? Exactly. You want to make sure that you optimize those pavements. If good. you can use a stiffer modulus, use it. Okay. Good. All right. Well, let's move on to... Not working again. There we go. All right. So now, um, moving on, uh, now that we talked a little bit about uh, structural evaluation, uh, we, we know what our layers are. You have a hot mix. For this particular example, we have a hot mix layer of flex space uh, sitting on top of soil. You know that layer composition and thickness. Using your Modular 7 program, you can use the back calculation, back so calculation they've procedure. they run FWD, and these are the numbers that they're coming back with. That's, those are the numbers. Gotcha. That, that's right. So you, you use a four inch hot mix layer, uh, eight inch flexible base, and then modulus is going to give you what, 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 what modulus you should have. So in this case, for this particular example, we have 300 KSI hot mix, 25 KSI flexible base, and, and as we discussed, typical range is from 40 to 70, uh, and then it's sitting on top of 10 KSI subway, which is Fair. And the two hundred inches is just assumes it's an infinite for the program. It's, yeah, it's could, be, could be more of that or whatever. Y yeah, yeah. So obviously here these numbers are lower than what we saw earlier. So this could be a pavement that's it's, it's feeling reached, its age. It's reached it's it's design <laughs> it's <feeling> old. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's when we need to consider, right? Um, okay, how much I mean I have enough structure, that's mm -hmm. when we, we we as payment engineers need to consider can we salvage what we have? Sure. Is there an ingredient I can put in there, do a full lab reclamation, and, and still salvage and, and reuse or what we have out there? Or remove a layer. All, all those options you kind of go through the process of. Yes. Okay, good. Good. So, here we go. All right. So, so next we're going to go into a scenario. Um, so, so, there's our example there on yes. the left hand side. So, here's our example, right? It, it, once, once, once we have a the modulus of the layers, we know what their payment is, uh, and that's what we need to consider. Is this, is this a candidate for full depth reclamation? In this case, I have enough structure. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can consider an eight inch full depth reclamation. We do a blend of hot mix and base, and then that still leaves me a little buffer uh, from, your, from your subgrade. You have a four inch flexible base, right. uh, and because and, and, you don't want to get into that. You don't want to FDR into your subgrade. You don't want to, especially if it's a, a high PI, yeah, you don't want to that, mix that. That'll mess up your, your program. Yeah. But this could be one example of, 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 of maybe where you're doing this, you could look at a, a complete reconstruction at mm -hmm. that point as well, and then you start playing cost benefit. You can also play, I mean, look at sustainability, recyclability, all those things that are big buzzwords nowadays of saying, hey, in that case, I can reuse everything. There was a, a presentation at this year's short course where they talked about, you know, it was a kind of a rural area. Um, it would have been a long haul to haul everything off, and so they ended up, I'm not pushing one thing or the other, but they ended up doing a system like this, 
and they didn't have to remove anything. They used everything, built themselves another really good foundation, put asphalt on top of it, and then off and go. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's great. Great example there. Great example. Yeah. Then, of course, you have to use your, your mixed design procedures to, mm -hmm. to know which, which ingredient is going to work best, and then you top it off with a hot mix layer. And then sometimes, you know, if, 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 if allowed, if, if, if it's possible, if you raise that profile, then it helps with drainage, too. Sure. Absolutely. Drainage is huge. Yeah, drainage. so, you know, this kind of is the, the way payment engineers uh, sh should be thinking. Um, and at the bottom, you have your F you, you have your existing condition, which you enter an FPS, and then the new design is where you either use your payment manual and a combination uh, with your standard operating procedures right. and, and use your, your values uh, right. to produce what, what thickness of hot mix should I have for that ESO loading. Gotcha. Gotcha. Good. Okay. Well, there now we get into da, 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 da. FPS 21, <laughs> um, and we're going to cover some basic uh, information before we move on to the FPS design. I mentioned earlier uh, the stress analysis tool right there, the second button. Mm. Um, that's where you can enter your la layer composition. Taking your existing information, mm -hmm. plug it in there, and, and do, your, do some checks. That's going to that's gonna tell you or, or simulate what the FWD deflection bowl should be. Okay. So if you, you have a new design, you use that tool, and, and for example, that, that particular design produces 20 mils of deflection. Okay. Then once it's built, you can go out there, run FWD, and, and see, see, okay, it's 20. Yeah. Yes. I mean, my assumptions were correct. Or if you get... 40 or 40 then you got oh, problems yeah and yes Houston we got a problem so, so well, let's good, go back good, good to way to check that yes check so let's that. go back to FPS okay so for this particular <laughs> roadway we're gonna design uh, Jim Warren Parkway sweet got a lot of easels there Jim yeah well you know I'm a, I'm a big guy <laughs> <laughs> so that's where you enter the <laughs> getting bigger every year you enter your, your project information so okay. we're gonna skip to the next part and you know that's your first big input page, and there's a lot of stuff in there. I mean, we could spend, you know, a day going through all this, but let's pull out maybe a couple areas in here that are we just really want to kind of emphasize. All sure. the stuff, stuff on the right side there, that looks like that's going to come from TPP, right? Yes. Some of that the information. Top right from yep. TPMP. So okay. you know, just to, uh, for, for information, of course, you can... For all those fields, if you hit the F1 button, you're going to get a help menu, oh, okay. and it's going to give you Very some guidance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. And that's nice. where the top, uh, the, the the two on the left came from. But just some basics uh, for flexible payments. Again, we designed for 20 years, and then we we have to set the 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 time where you want to see your first overlay. Okay. Uh, it's usually between eight to 12 years. For this case, we have 10 years. Could be longer. Could be longer. Yeah. I'm a big fan of that. Okay. And then that confidence level, if you go to the payment manual, they recommend a, a, a confidence level of C. Okay. And then the next two um, is your serviceability index, uh, and that's going to depend on how thick your hot mix is mm -hmm. and, and the type of, of roadway that you have. For this case, we selected a four and a half uh, initial and then a final serviceability of three. Okay. On your right side, that's when you enter the numbers from TPMP and the main component, easels. Gotcha. Gotcha. Equivalent <coughs> single axle loads. Got it. Moving on. So FBS has some some default uh, payments that you can use. So I can zoom in there. Go ahead. Sure. But then you can also draw there we go. A, a design, and, and that is what I did for this particular one. Okay. Um, for this, I'm assuming it's a new construction, and you can drag and drop the layers you're going to need for for this design. I select it from the bottom up as upgrade, mm -hmm. and I picked the design modulus of 8 KSI. Uh, since it's a little weak, then we, we chose to sta stabilize subgrade. Okay. We don't know what that's going to be, okay. uh, lime or cement, but assuming uh, 35 KSI for that. Right. Maybe my SOP says 8 inches for that particular layer, you so can you can fix, fix that. that. lift, then you can access. So you've done that. You've fixed a standard yes. thickness, or you can leave that open, and then the, the program will optimize Yes, um, it'll give you the options. Right. Mm -hmm. For flexible base, uh, I'm assuming a 50 KSI. Okay. And that, you know, for this particular case, I don't know what the roadway is going to need. So, so okay. I, I want FPS to tell me how much base I need. Okay. So we left that open up to 12 inches. Gotcha. And then on my hot mix, I, I selected the hot mix 
uh, thick. So 4 to 12 just to give it a range. And I okay. signed the allowable 650 KSI gotcha. from the payment man. Okay. All right. Very so good. now that we're ready, then we hit the run nice button, button and, and boom. back to back to the design. Um, Get in there again real quick. <clears throat> there we go. Very good. So as we discussed uh, in, in just, a, just a few minutes ago, uh, we asked the program to tell me, give me options. If I want to do a, an overlay in, in 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, what is going to get me there? Okay. And that first design is the most economical that is going to get you to a 20-year design life if you put a 2-inch overlay. Gotcha. So that's 8 inches of treated subgrade, 6 inches of flexible base, 7 inches of hot mix. Gotcha. Then, you know, when, when we look at, you know, constructability uh, aspects, right, you may have a, maybe designing a curb and gutter section. For this case, um, we might be fixed uh, to, to the curb and gutter, so we want right. that life, 20-year uh, life from the get-go. That way, when that payment deteriorates a bit, you're just resurfacing, okay. giving it some maintenance. Okay. But I think I think the the idea here though is you've got options. Mm -hmm. It's giving you some options, and I think it's. Um, I'm not a big fan of just grabbing the first one. And I, we we teach an engineering essentials course, and we've got one coming up in December. A couple seats left, so if you want to get into that, jump into it real quick. But you know, if you take the first one, it's optimizing based on its numbers plus it's optimizing based on. Uh, economy and we're not we haven't messed with any of the, the values there so that's another aspect that I don't think a lot of people probably use is is doing the economics part of it but you know when you're looking at this information uh, go through the process of, of how can we build is 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 design one going to be easier to build than design three you know or, or is three easier to, to, to build it may be you know it's it's Two bucks more, or a buck seventy or eighty dollars more, or based on these numbers. But in this process, take a look at that. And even when you get out to designs four and five, now they're saying, "Hey, if you build it this way with these thicknesses, you're not going to be back. You're going to do it one time, and you're going to go twenty years." Now, you know, is that the kind of pavement that we want to be back in ten years and have to be messing with, or do we want to be thinking about, "Hey"? We're going to do this, and we're not going to be back. We can't afford to be because there's so much traffic. There's so much stuff going on here. We just don't want to be back. So these are the options in FPS 21 that give you the flexibility to kind of look at all this stuff um, and, and, and make really good decisions. There's lots of, lots of options here as you go through this, but there's also a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. as well. So good deal. Good deal. Sure. The only thing, you know, as, as your easels go up, then, then that base is going to get thicker. Mm -hmm. And that's when you need to consider, okay, maybe if I treat it, get a higher modulus, then right. I can go back and run another scenario, see what that does to my thickness, right? Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, now we, we're going to move on to uh, the checks, right? Okay. For, for, for there we go. Text that our payment manual requires uh, that we do a traxel check. It's a Texas traxel check that's that's required, mm -hmm. and, and there's an, another optional mechanistic check, very useful. Mm -hmm. um, but but here we're going to focus first on the Texas traxel check. Um, one of the components that is going to drive this check is that average of the ten heaviest wheel loads daily from TPMP. So that's your box up there. Um, and then there's a, an allowable reduction. It's a cohesiometer value depending on the layers that you use. You select the, the one that gives you the best value. Okay. In this case, is the thicker hot mix. You enter that number. And for this particular case, once we hit the run button using the default subgrades, that design is okay. okay. Have enough thickness to protect the payment from those occasional heavy, uh, heavy loads. And I think we really need to make sure we do that. Yes. We really need to make sure we're doing that nowadays. So that's that's a good that's a good option that's in there. Absolutely. And then we've also got the uh, we've got the mechanistic check, which we don't have. And I think that's one of those things that that when you run that, it's predicting crack life, it's predicting rut life, and and and, and I think that's a really powerful tool um, that we use in, in the class that I teach. That we look at those criteria then uh, for the different options. And one of the options we use in our class, it's, it's, a, it's a thinner surfacing over a thicker flex base versus a little bit more asphalt and a little bit thinner flex base. And it goes from predicting 
crack life, which is actually going to, it says it's going to crack within the first 10 years. And, but the rut life is good because, you know, it's a, it's a stout payment. But on the second option, then, you know, it balances out. And then and it, and it, it, that rut, the, the rut life is a little bit left and the crack life is a little bit more and they're a little bit closer together from that perspective. And I, to me, when I, when we talk about that in, in, in the class, people go, well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, let's let's look at all this and not just get hung up and well, that's the first column and move on. Because, like you said, there's so many things involved here. But again, there's a lot of opportunities. Yeah, so like again, I said, make sure you use your district SOPs, um, but and, and and make sure we're using we're doing all those forensic tools, those evaluation tools ahead of time to really know what you've got out there. Spend the money, okay? You'll get it on the back end and then for performance. Mm -hmm. Not saying that, you know, I don't have it. I don't own a FWD and <laughs> I don't own a core rig, but those are things you're really able to see what's out there on the roadway. So, good deal. You know, that mechanistic check is going back to the mechanistic <coughs> check is really good, mm -hmm. uh, especially, you know, you have a design that you, it looks like it's going to work, mm -hmm. but once you have, you know, th there's a section that is maybe between two to four inches, it's susceptible at the bottom of cracking. Mm -hmm. So, once you run that check, uh, sometimes it tells you, okay, maybe I need a little thicker. Right. You need to go into the five, six inch, especially if it's energy sector. So that mechanistic check uh, can help you uh, avoid some of these premature Absolutely. failures. And when we, we look at, you know, loading and, and, and stress distribution and pavements, it's in that kind of that three to four inch range. Is, it's not necessarily right at the top. It's kind of down in there a little bit. So if you've got, if that's your interface between your flex base and your asphalt right at that real high stress concentration, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So we need to be thinking about those things as well. I wanted to, to just kind of give you a, a, a Jim Warren version of pavement design. You've heard Robert Trevino's uh, uh, version. I just wanted to kind of show you something that we do. Um, here's my subgrade. We do this in, in one of, a couple of our classes. Um, this is just a piece of cl clay block that we use. and. Honestly, if the road was good enough and it was all weather, we really wouldn't need to put anything on top of it, right? So we could just drive drive right on top of it. But every time we drive over, we're going to have the potential to actually create, you know, ruts in the pavement if it's not strong enough to, to, to carry the load that's intended. So we go out and we start, you know, get a layer. We, we put something on top of it, and then, you know, we, we start stacking stuff on top of this. Uh, in the process, and hopefully that's strong enough then to, you know, s spread the load out down into the subgrade. And that kind of makes sense. Um, one of the things we also talk about all the time is, is, and this gets back to your deflections and those kinds of things, is, is when I load something, I, I get a deflection, right? Mm -hmm. And this has got a much more significant deflection. I've got a little wedge here that's causing me more deflection than I need to. But if I, but these are not stuck together, okay? If I stick all those together, now with the same amount of effort or even more, I get a lot less uh, deflection. And so that's a, to me, that's a really important aspect of making sure when we're building these pavements, we're building these pavements not as a layer, we're building these pavements as a system. And every one of these pieces of the system has got to be bound together so it works as one big chunk of stuff. Mm -hmm. Even though it's made up of three to four, sometimes maybe even five different types of products, but it operates as one. It operates as a very large, large thing. So again, getting back to here, um, you know, what Robert was talking about is we don't want to damage that subgrade. So in the pavement design process, one of the things they do, they try to limit the, the compressive strain at the top of the subgrade. We don't want to overload the subgrade. If we overload the subgrade now, we've kind of lost our pavement. So in our, in our design, we want a thick enough asphalt section in here to distribute that load down so the load applying to the subgrade is less than what the subgrade the bearing capacity of the subgrade is, right? Mm -hmm. So then the subgrade doesn't deform. So that really is kind of a key aspect. And the other thing, it kind of in pavement design, is we're, we're designing for this compressive strain, strain at the top of the subgrade, but also the tensile strain at the bottom of the asphalt layer. That's going to keep the asphalt layer from doing what? Cracking. cracking. From the mm -hmm. bottom up. And you crack, bottom up crack is not a good crack. 
No. But top down crack I can deal with. Bottom up crack not so much. So essentially what we're trying to do is 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 control those stresses and strains, which is what we're doing by having thick enough sections and having sections in the right proportion. You know, it's getting stiffer as it goes up to be able to distribute that load down in the process. And so that's kind of my simplistic mindset of 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 what we're trying to do out there. So um, oh, that's a that's it, man. I think we're, we're kind of getting close on time and stuff. So closing comments. Jim, no, it was a, it was a pleasure a to be here. Came for a day. What would you do differently? With, I mean, honestly, we've got new design procedures coming. There's mechanistic pavement design coming. There's Ashto has got their own mechanistic design. I know Textout is working on. We talked to Jenny Lee yesterday. They're working on FPS 23, mm -hmm. which I think you were working on when you were there. Sure. Um, they still, they're still kind of working on that. Making progress. Yeah, making progress on that. So that's a kind of a little bit, a little twist on 21. And it's obviously, did FPS start out with one? I don't know. Don't know. Okay. It's maybe been a one, while. Maybe one of you guys can tell us <laughs> what was the first version of FPS. But um, anyway, hey, man, thank you for coming. Thank you. We appreciate, appreciate you coming. Uh, thank you for coming, uh, for joining us today at TechSap Alive. Uh, glad to have you guys here. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Thank you.